Morning, I'm Jeremy Tomlinson. I'm here to tell you about sharpening today. Now, sharpening. Sharpening is probably some uh, activity that some of us tend to shy away from. Maybe because we don't feel comfortable doing it. Maybe because we think it's a chore. But it certainly is a thing we should do more often than we think. A blade that is not optimally sharp won't give you an ideal quality of surface. As well, you might have to work excessively hard to get a shaving at all. But a very, very fine, finely uh, honed edge will give you a shaving that is very, very uh, fine and very thin. It's almost impossible to take a very thin shaving with a very blunt blade. It can only take a very heavy shaving. Now, in woods that are very figured, taking a heavy shaving can risk tear out. And that's not what we want when we're trying to finish a board to prior to oiling or whatever finish we apply to the surface. Now, when we work the, uh, a blade, we work the bevel on a water stone. But however, a sharp edge is two polished planes. The first plane is the bevel plane, and the second is the back of the blade. And both those planes have to be polished like a mirror intersecting that will give you a sharp edge. Now, it's also a good idea to keep your stones flat. Certainly you don't have to flatten every time you sharpen, but certainly keep them flat. Otherwise, over time, they tend to dish with, due to the pressure of the blade on the stone. I'll quickly just show you what it takes to flatten the stone. So these are water stones and just draw a few pencil lines down the surface. And then I take a 150 grit diamond plate. And the 150 grit diamond plate is very flat and it'll transfer its flatness to the stone. When the pencil lines have disappeared, then the stone will be as flat as the flattening plate. So it's just a few strokes and look at when the pencil lines have gone. When the pencil lines have disappeared, the stone is flat. As a matter of good practice, just flush the, the flattening stone off. And you could do that to both stones, typically the coarse and the fine. I like to start with the fine stone and end with the coarse, just so I don't mix coarse grits into my fine stone. Again, I'm flushing it off and put it aside. Now, consistency is the key to sharpening efficiently and sharpening fast. We want to sharpen fast not to get the job done in a hurry, but so we can get back to the bench. And so, if we sharpen today or at any time at an angle such, and the next sharpening we sharpen at an angle like that, when we go to the stone at a lower angle, we're not actually abrading the edge. So it's important that we get consistency in how we set the angle. Now, traditionally the honing guides that we've been using are these, which are a copy of the old English eclipse guide. Very, very good idea. Holds the blade on its edges and it keeps it 90 degrees to the axis that you're sharpening at. Here I have the Lee Nielsen prototype honing guide. Way more efficient. No longer do we need to actually pinch the blade tight with a screwdriver, but finger tight is a stronghold. You can't move it. Now, if I know the distance from the front of the guide to the edge of the blade and how that correlates to a known angle, then all I need to know is put down some stops on a scrap piece of board that represents that known distance and how it correlates to a known angle, then by setting that distance, I set the angle the same every time, reliably. That's the key to that rapid and efficient honing process. Now, the blade will tell you when you've got a fresh edge. When the edge is really actually on the surface of the stone and you start abrading that edge, a wire edge will form on the opposite side. Okay? Now I want you to just feel here how that feels when there's no wire edge at all. Okay? Now, I'll set this 
at my angle. I'm looking for a 35 degree angle. The primary angle, the primary bevel is 25 degrees. I'll be honing a secondary bevel or micro bevel a few degrees higher. That makes the edge more robust. It fattens the edge, makes it more robust. And there's less chance of it yielding or bending and then breaking. I now go to the coarse stone, which is a thousand grit stone. Place the wheel down first, then the blade edge, and then just a few strokes and test whether or not you raise that burr. You feel you've raised that burr, so your finger off the edge that way, and you can feel a little rough line. That's, the, that's what you need to feel to know that you've actually achieved a fresh edge. It is not yet a sharp edge, not being polished, but it is a new edge. But you also want to feel that it's even across the blade. Now, if it's a little higher here and a little lower there, you can go back to the coarse stone and just accentuate with a bit more pressure on the one side where it's been lower. Now, you turn over and see what you've done, and you'll see that the micro bevel there is not polished like a mirror because it's been in a coarse stone. Now we go from the coarse stone to the fine stone. This is 1,000 grit. We're going now to 10,000 grit. I want to just put a bit of water on the stone for lubrication. And now wheel down first. And as a rule of thumb, if it took me, say, four or five strokes to get a burr here, then maybe double the number of strokes to polish that surface on the fine stone. So a few extra strokes on the fine stone, and then stop, wipe the water off, and verify that the micro bevel is now like a mirror. OK. Now you have the first half of a keen polished or keen sharp edge, one polished plane. We now have to remove the burr on the back of the blade and create the second intersecting polished plane. Remove the blade from the honing guide. And now we take a thin ruler. This is a little six inch ruler. It's approximately 20 thou thick. And we attribute this method or technique to David Charlesworth. We call this the David Charlesworth technique. And we place the blade back on the ruler and within about one eighth of the edge of the other side of the stone. That lifts the, st the blade by that 15 or 20 thou and accentuates the pressure on the edge of the blade. Now you remove the burr, a few strokes, two or three strokes, removes the burr off the back of the blade, and now you've introduced the polish at the back, polish in the front, and intersecting to create a sharp edge. However, there's one word of caution here, and that is with a chisel, you never want to remove the burr using the ruler. The back of a chisel needs to be 100% flat. So it does take, it, it is required then that you first flatten the chisel, at least introduce some polish to a chisel to get rid of any of the manufacturing, grinding or milling marks and to ensure that you do have polish all the way to the edge. Now when you've sharpened a chisel through the process of the coarse stone and then the fine stone to remove that burr, you want to place the chisel flat on the stone. You don't want to introduce any angle whatsoever. Now, traditionally, we would have been told to remove the burr, running the chisel up and down the stone like this. I do prefer, however, to move the chisel back and forth like this. The reason I like to do that, rather, is when chisels go from wide to narrow, their width becomes less than their height. And when the chisel's width is less than its height, as you move back and forth across the stone, you have more propensity to roll the blade over. So if you remove the burr holding the blade flat on the stone, moving across the stone, it's a safer method to go, and you have less chance of rolling the blade over. Any questions? About how often would you have to do that if you're working with uh, a hardwood, a typical hardwood? You know, there's some... Hour? 
uh, no, the, it, it is rather about knowing when the blade is telling you that it's dull. Sometimes, I'll give you an example. If you're building a chest of drawers and you have a drawer of fronts that you're now going to attach to your drawers and you want to just finish them final before your oiling or whatever you do, and you start with a fresh blade and you plane the same thickness of shaving through the first six boards. And on the seventh board, you decide I need more depth. That should be a telltale sign. If you, on the seventh board, can't take the shaving you were taking on the early boards, it's probably a dull blade that's been developing. But the, the wood itself might be abrasive. It might be very hard and figured. And that abrasion or hardness might damage the edge sooner than you would like. And it might be that you only plane for five minutes and you have to rehone. It's very much dependent on the wood.